Hey, it's Kurt Thompson here, TrumpetSoso.com, and this is just an update right before we get into October 2019, and I wanted to make you aware that I have a lot of little cool practice aids, uh, practice exercisers, practice gadgets to help you, the brass player, get better. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. This is not going to be a lesson on each practice aid that I have here. That will come later uh, when you actually get the practice aid. Also, I got a couple of new instruments that I've been developing. And I think you're really going to want to lean forward and pay attention on this. I don't have many of them. In fact, the uh, one jazz horn that I have, I only have one. I have another on order. And I got a couple of piccolos. And I also have a flugelhorn coming uh, with a copper bell, a copper, a copper uh, rose brass mix. I think you're really going to like it. I think uh, for those of you that like flugel or looking to have something nice without breaking the bank, you're going to want to pay attention to this. Um, actually, I'm, I don't have the flugel in hand, but it's coming. It should be here in about a month. So we'll talk about that when it gets here. But I do have the uh, double bell jazz horn and my piccolos I want to talk about. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. But first, without further ado, let's get to the gadgets, practice aids, and exercisers. Many of you have probably seen this one before. I have a tutorial on it, um, like the Cheek Master. Um, you've probably seen it before. I got a couple tutorials on it. It actually does work. There's one problem. Uh, this this little guy here is about 50 bucks on Amazon, and I've provided a link in my other video. So that has kept quite a lot of you from becoming involved in this particular uh, technique. I have got a suitable replacement for less than half the cost. I call this the Sizzle Jack. It's a replacement for the facial flex that you saw in a couple other tutorials on YouTube. This does the same thing. You put this in your mouth and you squeeze. And there's a certain way to do this. And I described that in a tutorial that will accompany this. This is a substitute for the $50 version and you're gonna save um, quite a bit of money on this plus you're going to get a tutorial to go along with it So this is the sizzle jack the sizzle jack. It's up on my website right now. You can get it Many of you see me do the tutorial on the expand lung Works well, I got a uh, got a nice in-depth uh, video on it Actually, I don't know if you've seen the tutorial, but you've seen my review of it. It's called the Expanded Lung. It ranges in price from 35 bucks up to 50. And this is a inhaler restriction device. So it, uh, the way we use it, it, redu it puts a drag on your inhale, which puts a, a load on your diaphragm as the diaphragm pulls down. So that's what you're using it for. I found a suitable replacement at a significant savings and I'm not exactly sure what the name of this one is going to be yet but it's going to involve sizzle maybe like the sizzle restricted inhaler that's probably what I'm going to call it because that's what it is so it has three levels so you just put it in your mouth and you inhale but of course it puts a drag on your inhale and there's different levels so that was the first one you can go to the next one That significantly reduces the amount of air you can pull. And then the third one is the most restrictive. <sighs> Can't really get a whole lot of air. So I have a replacement for the more expensive expand lung. I have the sizzle restricted inhaler. And you're going to save a lot of money. Plus, I'm going to have a tutorial on how to best use this and increase your breathing capacity and your the first stage of compression, actually. So the sizzle restricted inhaler, 
Uh, look for that on my website. It's there right now. Next, I got the sizzle bite. The sizzle bite. And by the way, for those of you, I'm not jumping up into the camera. You can see close up pictures of these on my site. I've been studying and actually experimenting on myself over the last couple of years of increasing all the face muscles here because they kind of all sync up together, right? So if you make one part of your face stronger, it's going to affect the other part, especially from your nose on down. And um, I have determined that um, working your, your biting capacity um, can actually help out um, be, being a brass player and give you more fortitude, more endurance. I wouldn't say by just um, chewing on this, you're going to start playing double C's and triple C's, um, but it, it adds to um, the fortitude of your face, the strength and the musculature and the physiology. Anything we can do that can just push us in the direction of getting better, we got to try. Because almost all of us don't have that natural gift that Maynard Ferguson had. Just say somebody like Bill Watrous and Dave Steinmeier. I mean, can you go out to a jazz club tonight if you're in New York and L.A. and hear someone play like that? No. They, they just don't have the range and the ability and the chops and the smoothness. You can hear some very good players, some very good bone players. Um, let's see. Bobo and Oystein come to mind for tuba players and brass, uh, David Childs and some others. So... Uh, most of us just weren't born with this natural talent. Yeah, they had to practice, but they had the natural talent. That's why I'm introducing these practice aids and devices. Anything that you can do um, to, to push you in the direction of um, better musicality. And for us brass players, that lot of, virtually for us brass players, that means a lot of physical work. Uh, brass playing, it'd be nice if we could just work only on music and technique, but, you know, like a piano player. Do you see a piano player doing finger weights and all these crazy finger exercises? Oh, I know Franz Liszt may, may have done that. I heard that he worked some crazy trills with his fingers. But th for the most part, piano players don't really have to. That's the bad news about being a brass player, but it's, there's also good news. That means there's things we can do to help us um, um, even the score with people like Maynard Ferguson and Maurice Andre. Right? Got these two guys. There's, it's not accidental. I got Maurice, uh, Maurice Andre and Maynard Ferguson behind me. Uh, the two of the best brass players, regardless of what brass instrument that ever walked the planet Earth. So this one is designed to chew. You can put it in both sides of your mouth. And I'll have a tutorial on this one. It will accompany this practice aid. This is the sizzle bite. Next up, we got this sizzle chomp, the sizzle chomp. Looks like a mouth guard for an MMA fighter or a hockey player or a football player. I take this, the little plastic knob or spacer out. It allows me to get a little bit more of a chomp. This is a different action than the sizzle bite. There's a, just a different action that's happening when you put the whole thing into your mouth. So this is a sizzle chomp. Um, it will come with a tutorial on how to do it. Uh, you might just think you put it in and you chew it a couple times. No. <laughs> or you might think, well, I'll keep it in my car and I'll chew it all day. No. Uh, there's a thing called TMJ. And uh, I'm not going to spell it out for you. But you don't want to screw up your, your face, your jaw and everything. Because then you might not be able to play. I have a specific way to do this. It's like all these little practice aids and devices are like seasoning like a little bit of cayenne, like a little bit of paprika, salt, pepper, dill, um, even jalapenos, a little garnish. That is not, this is not the main course. Your instrument is the main course. This is just like a little spice, a little seasoning. And you have to make sure you do it the right way and do, do it in small amounts. So this is a sizzle chomp. Again, you want to see close-up pictures of this, you'll find it um, at my site. It's also All these are for sale. That means you can click on the link in my description 
Actually, I might put several links for each item, but you'll click on that, you go, go right to my site and you can buy it and I'll ship it out to you right away. Next is a wacky one. I call it the sizzle cheeks. Sizzle cheeks. It is just another way to contract your chops. Remember, we're trying to get the contraction and our musculature hit from all kinds of angles. If it didn't matter, then I wouldn't be doing this and I would just give you a golf pencil, like when you play miniature golf, and I would just tell you to hold that in your lips for 30 seconds a day the way your band director, and for you older folks, the way your band director probably did when you were in seventh grade. That doesn't cut it. In fact, for a lot of people, that's made them worse. So you have to hit your face and your the physiology from a lot of different angles in different ways otherwise just do the pencil exercise how many of you are playing like maynard or maurice andre just by doing the pencil exercise you're not because that your face gets used to it or you get worse because you lose your flexibility so you have to have something else so we got the sizzle cheeks This is hitting your, your, your squeeze and contraction even different than the sizzle jacks. Cool little device. You can see close-up pictures of it, and it's on my site to buy and for you to get better. And last and least are the sizzle lips. Now, when I first saw this, I laughed because, you know, um, I think some people use this as like a party joke or something like that. And you can use it for that probably because it's just ridiculous. But I got to thinking, what, hap what would happen if you put this in your mouth and you try to squeeze on it? And, you know, could you get some value out of it as a brass player? It looks ridiculous. It <laughs> looks stupid. But the thing is, it works. It works. I mean, it works different than the other ones I just showed you. So here we go. The sizzle lips. Crazy. It kind of feels good when it goes in. I feel like it gets the muscles right underneath your chin better, which is where you got that leverage. And I believe these two guys are were born with that natural leverage right under here. Makes that shelf... Uh, for for your mouthpiece so um, this actually I feel like this actually um, works the muscles right under here from the chin up to the lips it's a crazy stupid weird quirky looking funky device it's like a plastic rubbery thing but it works I'm showing you stuff that could look silly to you but it works it does work and this again is hitting and making you contract your chops at a different angle in a different way This is uh, like a weightlifting belt, the back brace belt. And this is my, I call it my restricted inhaler. It's actually in the course. Some of these are, are in the course. Some of these practice aids I might put in the course as a bonus, my 16 week course. And so uh, this one, um, we're going to, we're using it. It has, it has Velcro. I don't know if you can hear it. Velcro. This is extra large, so it should fit most people. And I'm also going to include extra Velcro straps that reach out about another three or four inches, five inches on each side. Uh, so if you're bigger than me, uh, those extra straps will be able to accommodate you. And you might want to just let me know if you're bigger than I am. I'm a pretty big guy and I can actually use this uh, for this particular technique. Uh, but I figure there might be some people bigger than me. And uh, I do have the extra Velcro straps for you to We'll put it around your torso. Now, I'm not going to exactly show you how to do that because that's part of the tutorial that you'll get with this. We're using this for restricted inhaling and to develop your physiology to be able to pull in more air against uh, a restriction or against a heavy load. 
So that's what we're going to be using this for. This is actually available now on my website. And this is, I don't want you to use this for going to the gym or for if you have a low back problem or anything like that, uh, because you want to get a better quality one for that. Um, for going to the gym and for like a back brace, I, I would recommend spending between 50 and up to 80 bucks for a good quality one. This is not that kind of quality. It's, we're only going to use it just for this spe specific exercise that I'm going to be giving you. And then you put it away. It's just, uh, this is good for that, but it, this is not the 60 or $70 quality kind of back brace or, or back support you would take to the gym. So that's just uh, my heads up on that. So this is the restricted inhaling belt. So we'll talk more about that. Another cool device I got is, I wouldn't say this is a practice aid, this is more of a performance enhancer. I've been working with machine shops and also investigating what metal is the most dense that we could wrap around our mouthpiece where it inserts into the instrument. And keep in mind that the metal has to be dense, otherwise it would be too big and you couldn't get the mouthpiece in. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's like aluminum, you'd have to have a whole bunch of it uh, to, to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. What are we trying to accomplish with these weights? We're trying to um, stymie the lost vibrations and sound that happen at the insert of your mouthpiece into your, your brass instrument and send that energy and vibration through your horn as, as opposed to have it dissipating. Um, right at uh, the insertion of your mouthpiece into the instrument. By having a weight right there, you got to dampen the vibrations and it, there, so they're not lost and they're sent on through the horn. Now you need something heavy and dense. And what I came up with was tungsten. I didn't even really know about tungsten. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know too much about it, but I was impressed. Tungsten is twice as dense as lead. It's almost right up there with gold. It's just about right up there with gold as far as heavy. Like this, this little guy here is about three ounces. So um, it really works. Now, you, what if you say, well, Kurt, I already got one of those megatone mouthpieces. You know, the whole thing is like a big, a big clump of metal. Well, if that's the case, look at where the where the the mouthpiece inserts into the horn. Uh oh, you see the, the mouthpiece where it inserts into the horn is not heavy weighted, right? The heavy weight comes into into the bell part of the mouthpiece, and not not the shank. The shank is where we need the weight. So if you went out and spent two hundred dollars or one hundred fifty on a megatone for whatever instrument that you play on, uh, it might color your tone a little bit differently, but let's face it, you're not getting um, what we're after here on adding the weight to your mouthpiece. We're, we're trying to dampen the vib loss vibrations and send those vibrations through your horn. So number one, you get better slotting, you get a better tone, and more often than not, you'll notice a little pop in your range. Th that's what we're trying to accomplish by adding the weight. And I'll show you um, some of the um, instruments where I've already placed the sizzle weight on. Oh, tungsten is not cheap. The other devices I showed you are going to be pretty nominal in price. This one is not. These are relatively expensive. And then to drill out tungsten is it quite a feat because a lot of times drills are made out of tungsten to drill into other metal. So this was actually tough. This was not something that you can accomplish just on your home drill. You actually have to put it on a lathe. It's actually pretty tough. It was kind of a long drawn out process. So I have these sizzle weights. For every brass instrument, from tuba to baritone, euphonium, um, trumpet to cornet to French horn. So, in a, and you're going to see me demonstrate some of those today. I'll just uh, show you how they fit on the horn. This actually is heavy. So, um, it, it really is heavy and we'll, we'll talk about it. Well, I can just put it on a scale. Let's just... I don't know. Let's see. 
Okay. See if you can see it on the scale. Uh, this one's around, I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but this one here is around two and a half, three ounces, and that's with the hole drilled out. So watch it. See that? This is this is not light, folks. There's some serious weight there. It should have gone down about two and a half, three ounces. So, uh, and then the, the trumpet ones and the French horns are a little bit lighter. They're around an ounce and a half or so. Now, how did I get that idea? I got the idea when I got my Curry sound sleeve and I got it um, years ago and I put it on. I, you'll notice that most of my videos, I don't have it. I think all of them I don't because I put it on my mouthpiece and I couldn't really feel like it made any difference. The reason it doesn't make any difference is it's not made out of tungsten. Maybe, I think it's made out of aluminum or could be steel. It's just not heavy enough. Uh, this thing right here for trumpet, the sound sleeve, doesn't even weigh an ounce. Uh, let's just see if you can find it, but I, I believe it weighs about three quarters to a half an ounce. Nothing. So the problem is when you put this on your trumpet shank, it doesn't do much. It's only a little bit of a weight. Maybe it does a couple percentage. And so I started thinking, uh, what if you had a more denser weight? That's how I came up with this idea. What if you had a denser weight that was actually heavier that actually could make a difference? Uh, should somebody try that? And so that somebody happened to be me. I found out you can't just use steel or aluminum or nickel. It's just too light. It doesn't make much of a difference. So not to slam curry, but their, their products, yeah, they look kind of stylish and good, but you won't really notice much of a difference if you buy their typical weight. Um, the weight that I have is 50% heavier than this guy, and you'll see it on the trumpet, but it's like half the size. So the one I have is a good ounce and a half, but it's half this size. This is about a half, comes out to about a half ounce, three quarters of an ounce. It doesn't really do anything, but you double this, and then now you got something, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, just to recap on stuff that you already know about, if you don't have uh, the sizzle pipe, boy, are you really missing out. I mean, I do this, um, I don't know, at least every day. Sometimes I miss a day, but it's pretty much every night I try to do it or in the, or in the morning. Uh, just depends. Now, I have my big Bach one mouthpiece in this one. I also have a French horn mouthpiece, another one, um, just for kicks, just trying to get up my uh, French horn chops a little bit. But... The amazing part of this is you're going to increase your sound, open up your sound, and it's just going to feel like when you blow your horn, now I have this mainly geared towards trumpet players right now, it's going to feel like the horn blows easier and your sound is going to be better. Really, if you don't have one of these, now you can do this on your horn, uh, but there there are some kind of pains about that with the, vet, with the uh, slide grease, pulling out, scratching it up. Uh, this one's mobile. You can take it in your car and be doing it at stoplights or in traffic. And since it's open, by the way, this is extra, super, extra large bore. It's a 0.495. So big, a lot bigger than any trumpet that you're going to play on. That's another thing. You get used to doing this and the trumpet feels, um, um, I don't want to say it feels smaller. It just feels like you can you know, put more sound through it. So don't forget about the sizzle pipe. If you don't got one of these, don't complain that you um, have a weak sound that your sound is not big, that you're not able to play higher, that your sound is not dark and resonant. Don't complain about that if you're not using this. You better get a sizzle pipe. And you already know about these. You should be having fun with the sizzle rims, tuba, trombone, euphonium, trumpet, and French horn. In fact, I've had several people buy the combo pack. That's where you get all these. And you know, I have a tutorial on that where you actually buzz and in different ways and different amounts throughout the week, depending on what your instrument is, on all four rims. Tuba, 
trombonifonium, uh, trumpet, French horn. Or if you're not quite sure, just buy the one rim of the mouthpiece that you play on. There is absolutely no question in my mind that the rim buzzing is almost essential now. In fact, I've actually put it into my 16 week revised course. I'm revising my course this year for the 10 year anniversary. The rim buzzing is gonna become part of it. It's gonna be required. Just because I believe in that much, I proved it to myself. It will pop up your range. It will increase your flexibility and help out your tone. Um, I've already had this on my site for quite some time, but just a reminder of the sizzle room. If you don't got it, better go get it. I'm gonna introduce a couple of new horns for you. I only have one of these right now, but I have another one on the way. This is the Sizzle Jazz Duo. Duo for double bell, right? And you can see that it has a, a rotor in the back to switch you over to the second horn. This is a pro quality horn, Monel valves. Um, the tuning's great. Uh, I, I could almost say that you're playing on a box Stradivarius. It kind of has that same kind of feel. It has a darker, warmer sound. Uh, I wouldn't use this for playing lead trumpet, but it would be ridiculous. You don't need two bells for lead trumpet. But this is perfect for you jazz trumpet players. Perfect. If you play jazz trumpet, just think of the possibilities you could do and play with this horn. In fact, hey, go ahead and take a listen. Okay, we got to keep it there, I believe. All right, hope you liked listening to me on the Sizzle Jazz Duo Double Bell Trumpet. I only got one right now. If you play jazz trumpet and could think of some amazing things to do with that horn, um, you better hit me up right now. I have a feeling it'll be gone. That one that you saw is the only one I have. I do have another one on the way. If you are interested, you need to contact me right away. I only got one, brand new, ready to ship. I got two piccolos, two piccolos, two piccolos. Um, silver flavored and brass flavored. So let's see, what do I got in stock? I just got these two right now. They're in stock, they're ready to ship, they're brand new. They sound great, and I got two more. I believe I got two more of these. I'm not sure if I got two silver or not. These are rotaries. I also got a piston version, and this is the Sizzle Andre Baroque style piccolo trumpet. Gorgeous horns. Uh, are they? Someone asked me, uh, a student asked me if it's as good as the P54 or the Selmer or a Scherzer. Uh, so no, let me be honest. I mean, this um, first off, the price tag is not thirty five hundred. The price tag is not forty five hundred. The price tag is not six thousand. So um, no, 
I would say that these horns are not as good as a $5,000 Scherzer or a $3,800 Schilke P54. No, it's not, not that good. But these are an advanced piccolo for just about everything. In fact, just to see how good they are and how well they play in tune, for the most part, go ahead and check me out. Check it out. The Andre Baroque, folks. I've developed it. You're going to benefit from it. All right, I got my euphonium baritone here. You know, some people ask me when I say that my 16 week upper register course is for all brass players, um, I do get comments like, well, if it's for all brass players, Kurt, how can we never see you playing tuba? How can we never see you playing French horn? And you know, on and on and on, like, they're kind of heckling me a little bit. But I, I started thinking about it and I was like, well, here's the honest answer. I mainly play trumpet. Most of my students happen to be trumpet. But that doesn't mean I don't also teach the other brass instruments. And that doesn't mean that I don't know how to play these. I have put in my time and paid my dues and learned how to play the other brass instruments. So, uh, but I'm going to be honest, I don't play baritone every day. I don't play tuba every day. Maybe once a month, maybe once every couple of months. I mainly am spending time on the instrument that I'm the best at, which is trumpet. But that doesn't mean that I don't know how to teach this guy. In fact, when it comes to brass playing, really... There's a lot of things that are very, very close to the same or compatible as far as improving um, your chops, your embouchure, your tone, your endurance, your tongue, your flexibility. The, all of it cross, crosses over, really. It really does all cross over. So that is why I say my 16-week brass upper register course is for all brass players. Uh, in fact, I just had uh, someone recently graduate from the course uh, Euphonium He's a euphonium player named Riley. 
Uh, he's a pretty kick-ass player. Sounds good. Got a good improvement out of the course. It was worth it for him. And now he's uh, going to be studying with, I believe, Stephen Mead um, over in England. So, I mean, guy's a good player, and he also got good results. He's a euphonium player. So my course does work for all brass players. Uh, and notice, look, I got the uh, sizzle weight. Got the sizzle weight on there. And, um, but, you know, here, take a listen. Hope you like that and then see I can play a little bit of euphonium baritone right so you're probably thinking hey you can do that but you can't do the tuba well uh, as a matter of fact I can take a close look I got the sizzle weight on the tuba <laughs> tuba all the time but I can certainly teach you how to become a better tuba player better breast support better attack better articulation and yes better range let's face it low brass players look at it it's I would say maybe it's a more smaller bore tuba I mean you could probably get it for um, under a thousand bucks but let's just face it when it comes to playing low if I go out and spend $12,000 on a Miraphone, brand new Miraphone um, tuba, guess what? I can play just as low as you, just as loud and low as the best tuba players on planet Earth. Playing low on a low brass instrument is about the instrument, not so much about the player. Maybe a little bit about the player, not so much. It's about your instrument. Now what about going higher? Going higher is about the player, not about the instrument. You can play on the most amazing Miraphone tuba or Yamaha or, or whatever tuba that you want to get and spend $10,000 or spend $15,000 and guess what? The upper register, your tone, everything, your endurance is about you, the player, and your strength, not about the instrument. 
popping out pedals and double pedals and blatting and playing low. And actually, maybe it's not just blatting, but sounding good. It's more about the instrument. So uh, I've seen some low brass brag and brag and brag about how they can play, play low. They can play pedals. It's about your instrument, folks. Don't take too much credit for that. You brag when you can play the double highs and the triple highs, okay? You know, when you can get up there like Bobo. Like Oystein. Then you brag. If you're popping out double pedals and you're bragging about that, there's, there's nothing to brag about that. It's your instrument, okay? Take a listen. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit on tuba. enjoyed tuba and um yeah so no i don't do i don't do tuba every week i don't do it every month but i certainly know how to play it i know how to teach it i know how to make you a better tuba player that's 100 percent the fact now what do we got here trombone now you have seen me play several pieces with trombone uh, a lot more than tuba but uh, again i don't play this all the time look i got the sizzle weight on it uh, better accuracy, better tone, a little bit better range. It works. And so, um, yeah, go ahead and take a listen. I also can play and teach cornet. It's about the same as trumpet, not exactly. And notice, got a sizzle weight that works with cornet. Let's see if this guy's warmed up. I'm just showing you this mainly to let you know that there is a sizzle weight that will fit your cornet mouthpiece. French horn! And look at sizzle weight on the French horn. I got one for the French horn. Most of you don't see me play French horn that much and that is true. I don't play French horn all the time, but I do teach it. I do teach you how to get better. Hey, you know what? Take a listen. Let me play something a little harder than that. Thank you. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth discussion about practice aids, practice devices. Um, I'm giving you tips and tricks and exercises and all kinds. I'm trying to get your brain thinking and turn the light bulb on. I've got new instruments that are going to be much more affordable than the typical brand name. Uh, you've seen me post a wanted piccolo ad for quite some time. I, I really wanted to get involved in piccolo. I didn't have $4,000 in my pocket or my bank account or 5,000 for a share. So I just didn't have that extra cash to go put down on a piccolo. Now I got a great piccolo. It's going to be either half or even one third the cost of some of these brand name piccolos. And it's a decent horn as you'll see. Uh, the, the, Double bell jazz horn. I only got one right now. You better grab it. The holidays are coming up. Can you imagine what you're going to do with it uh, and all the possibilities? And then let's just face it. If you're listening to this and you already can play amazingly high with a big open sound, with a gorgeous tone, flexibility, you can do the whole world of trumpet or brass instruments from classical to jazz to rock to commercial. You can do it all. Well, then you don't need to get any of this stuff. You don't need the sizzle pipe. You don't need the sizzle rims. You don't need these other practice aids. You already can do it all. But for the rest of you, if you're wanting an edge, all these give you a percent edge. Here, you get 1% here, 2% there, 3% there. And of course, you got to practice your main instrument. But this will all put the thumb on the scale and tilt the odds in your favor to becoming a better brass player. And, now, and let's just really think about it. Why not try? Why not get these and just try? You don't really have much to lose. So I'm Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com. 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 Go there and you can always click on catalog when you get there. And you click on catalog and the whole thing comes down. Or you can search my site for a specific item, but you click on catalog and you can scroll through for all these items. I'll try to have the link in the description below. Uh, we're getting into October of 2019, and now is the time to go ahead and get involved in this stuff. Also, don't forget all, about all my courses. Courses to make you better more quickly. I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, by the way, uh, it wouldn't hurt a little bit to, if you wanted to support this channel. That would be great. Um, I got Patreon.com that um, some people kind of throw me a bone from time to time. It's really cool. I do a lot of work. It, all this is pretty much for free. And it takes a lot of time to do all this. So anyway, it's just a thought. Hope you're having a great day that you enjoyed this. You got something out of it. And the light bulb came on for you. Bye for now. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson.